Right after World War II, the population of Cripple Creek had dropped to less than 1,000, and gold production had gone from a high of 18 million a year to only $200,000. Cripple Creek was at a crossroads, and the city looked desperately for another way besides mining to survive. So the city turned to its storytellers to help revive an interest in its history and to promote Cripple Creek as a tourist destination. In 1946, Dorothy and Wayne Mackin bought the Imperial Hotel and went about the hard work of restoring it. They had the vision and energy to promote tourism and produced a classic melodrama in the Gold Bar Theater. The first year, more than 4,500 people drove up to enjoy this unique entertainment and the Mackins continued this very successful tradition of the melodrama for almost 50 years. But in the early 1950s, the Mackins had a financial setback, and they faced the real possibility of closing their Imperial Hotel for good. Unable to get a bank loan to save their business, the Mackins turned to the Myron Stratton home for help. Fifty years after his death, just like he had done after the fires, Winfield Scott Stratton saved the town of Cripple Creek again by grub-staking the Mackins. In 1953, nationally known historian Marshall Sprague published Money Mountain, a definitive history of Cripple Creek. Money Mountain helped launch a renewed interest in the legacy of the mining district, and almost 50 years later, it is still considered the Bible on the history of Cripple Creek. International journalist Lowell Thomas, the son of a Victor physician, was a strong proponent of the Cripple Creek Mining District. He began his journalism career at the Victor Daily Record, and he eventually became one of the most respected journalists of his time. Well, I'm an enthusiast for um, all mining camps, but of course particularly for my own hometown. Because when I was a boy, uh, the Cripple Creek District was regarded as the greatest gold camp in the world. I imagine its only rival uh, in those days was uh, the great camp at Johannesburg on the Transvaal. But anyhow, the miners took some $800 million out of these mountains right here in the Cripple Creek District. I worked in the mines as a boy. I started working when I was, oh, about 13 years old, I guess, or maybe earlier than that. The first mine I worked on was called the Tornado, and I worked in a tremendous stoke where rocks were falling down constantly, and I was very, very glad to get out of that damn stove. In 1958, Cripple Creek historian Mabel Barbie Lee published her first book entitled Cripple Creek Days. Arriving in Cripple Creek as a young girl with her mother on a stagecoach in 1892, she tells the tale of how her stagecoach was robbed by gentlemen bandits who ended up giving her a silver dollar. A graduate of Colorado College, Mabel Barbie Lee returned to the town of Victor as a teacher and included among her students a young Lowell Thomas. In 1953, the original Midland Terminal Depot was converted into the Cripple Creek District Museum. The Cripple Creek District Museum contains an extensive collection of photographs and artifacts that preserve and celebrate the history of Cripple Creek. In the 1960s, Cripple Creek newspaper publisher and mayor Bill Robinson started the tradition of the Aspen Jeep Tours. The popular Aspen Tours allow people to experience the history of the mining district while enjoying the beautiful Aspen turning in the fall. Later in the 60s, the Cripple Creek and Victor Narrow Gauge Railroad was established to let tourists step back in time and enjoy Cripple Creek's railroad legacy. The Hard Rock miner's best friend, the donkey, has always run free in Cripple Creek. The Two Mile High Club manages and cares for the town's wandering herd, and they sponsor the popular Donkey Derby Days. This annual competition in June is a comical and always entertaining race down Bennett Avenue. Because of the many wonderful storytellers and unique Cripple Creek traditions, the mining district was able to survive the tough times after the gold rush. <laughs>